Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes. Today we're going to talk about how stress can affect your sex hormones. We're going to talk a little bit more than just sex hormones too. We're going to talk about all hormones in general, including thyroid hormone, we're going to talk about cortisol, and we're going to talk about your blood sugar too. So we, our bodies experience three types of stress. We experience physical stress over and under working out, so from your weekend warriors to your couch potatoes. We have the one that we're probably all most familiar with, is our emotional stress. And then of course there's a chemical stress. And chemical stress can include things like immune system dysfunctions, it can include things such as chronic infections, environmental toxins, uh, blood sugar issues, there's a whole slew of things that are considered a chemical stressor to our, uh, according to our bodies. So when we have high stress, our bodies respond by releasing a high amount of cortisol. Now a lot of times when I say cortisol, especially to women, we tend to point to our bellies because we think it gives us a lot of belly fat. But appropriate amounts of cortisol are extremely important because it helps control your blood sugar. It's a very, very important anti-inflammatory and it also helps control your blood sugar. But when we are under chronic high stress, it wreaks havoc on our bodies. So that's what we're going to dive into. So high cortisol, let's focus on this half of the board for right now. High cortisol is going to start extremely affecting your blood sugar levels. So high cortisol can actually lead to what we call leptin resistance. Leptin resistance makes it really hard for you to lose weight. Lept what we do is we tend to hold on to all of our fat cells rather than burning them and using them for energy. High cortisol also causes insulin surge. Now there's a big process that happens with this, but to give you a short idea of what takes place is when we are under a lot of stress, what happens is our brain burns through glucose really fast. As we burn through glucose, we tend to, our, our blood sugar will then drop. When our blood sugar drops, that's a chemical stressor in our body, so we release cortisol. That cortisol helps with the production of more blood sugar through our system. So we get insulin surges, because insulin surges go with blood sugar surges. Those insulin surges can also cause leptin resistance, or in it we start to make more fats and we don't burn them very well. Those insulin surges in women will cause an increase in testosterone. It causes an increase in an enzyme called 1720 lyase, where we can actually, instead of making a high amount of estrogen, we start producing more male sex hormones. We see high testosterone. So is where we start to see things like polycystic ovarian syndrome. Insulin surges it cause an inflammatory cascade. So we start to see this vicious cycle of inflammation, systemic inflammation, so joint pain, a lot of brain fog, inflammation from head to toe. These insulin surges from high cortisol will also cause an increase in blood pressure and an increase in your cholesterol. So you can see these high, high stress with high cortisol will wreak havoc on your ability to control your blood sugar. Now high cortisol will also start to affect your immune system. What it does, that high cortisol actually breaks down the gut barrier and we start to see something we call leaky gut or gut hyperpermeability. It also suppresses the secretion of secretory IgA, the huge immune system, immunoglobulin A, which is used in our gut in order to support our immune system, kill off bacteria, parasites, yeast, and protect us from things that are not supposed to be in our, in our circulation and we get a loss of immune barriers. Now, if you've watched any of our autoimmune videos, where we talk about the autoimmune trilogy, you'll know that the loss of immune barriers is the first step to starting to produce an autoimmune disease, an autoimmune destruction. All right, now this half of the board. High cortisol will start affecting brain function, specifically in our anterior pituitary, and it causes the suppression of LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone. Now these are what we women need in order to start producing estrogen and progesterone in order for our cycle to become normalized. So we might start seeing changes in fertility and our cycle. High cortisol, anytime we have a high amount of any type of hormone, those hormones then have to go to the liver to be conjugated or detoxified or made water soluble so we can eliminate them through sweat, through urination and defecation. If we have a high amount of any hormone, it has to go to the liver to be 
uh, to be detoxified. If we have too much of this, our liver gets way overloaded and we see liver detox overload. With liver detox overload, we will once again have a hard time losing weight because when you lose weight, all, that, all the toxins from the fats have to go to the liver. And if your liver's already overloaded, it can't handle more. We start to see high sensitivity to smells. We start to see a lot of breakouts. And fat, when you eat fats, it tends to really irritate you. So we have liver detox issues. High cortisol will also start to affect the hippocampus. We see destruction of the hippocampus. We're going to start seeing some massive memory changes with high cortisol. High cortisol will also affect your thyroid and it's huge. It has a huge effect on your thyroid. It causes what we call hormone resistance. So for these people, it's cl the classic hypothyroid patient who has to consistently increase their thyroid dosage, their, uh, their medication dosage, because they're experiencing what we call hormone resistance. We also start to see an underconversion of our T4 to T3. Now your thyroid produces a ton of T4 and very little amounts of T3. T3 is the one that helps give you the relief of your hypothyroid symptoms. It's the one that helps us lose weight, gives us healthy hair, skin, and nails. It's the one that helps with the GI movement. So what our body has to do is convert the T4 that our thyroid makes into T3. And it does that mostly outside of the thyroid. A large portion of that is actually done in the liver. So if we're already having liver detox overload and the liver can't function the way it's supposed to, we're not going to make a whole lot of T3. And we do another, we, about 20% of your conversion also takes place in your gut. And if we're having GI issues from high cortisol, we're going to have this under conversion again. So as you can see, stress really, really impacts how we are able to handle our sex hormones, our thyroid hormones, and our blood sugar. So we absolutely need to do things that help with our stress. Of course, a lot easier said than done, but we gotta start looking at those three stressors and figuring out what it is that we can do in order to cope with stress. So what we usually rec what we work on here is those chemical stressors. So one thing I highly recommend that will help to the extreme is make sure you have stable blood sugar all day long. Stable blood sugar might even help the physical and emotional stressors seem not as difficult as as uh, they initially presented. So blood sugar, make sure you are eating an adequate breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. Never skip breakfast and never skip a meal. Now, what you should focus on for those meals is a good source of protein with each meal and a lot of vegetables. Make sure you have more vegetables than anything else in your diet and also make sure you've got a good source of fat throughout your day. We usually, when it comes to fruit and it comes to other sorts of carbohydrates, we usually like to see like where uh, someone's blood sugar is before we start making recommendations as well as inflammatory uh, markers on blood work. But a good rule of thumb is a good source of protein and vegetables, especially with breakfast. So that means not eating just oatmeal for breakfast or muffins or bagels or worst of all, donuts. We want a good source of protein like some sort of sausage patty. I don't even, a lot of people can handle bacon or eggs. Some good source of protein with a lot of vegetables as well will make a huge difference in your cortisol levels. So if you found this information interesting and you're hoping to find out what else you can do for your stress, for your blood sugar, or your stress hormones, or your, your thyroid and your gut, I highly recommend you check out some of our other videos. They're found on YouTube as well as Facebook. You can also find detailed information on our blog um, that's found on our website, iBraidandBody.com. Thanks everyone. I hope you found this interesting and have a great day.